Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Sunday, October 25th, 2020, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the 2020 election and just giving you a general update of what's been happening as we proceed through this video. So pretty much a lot has shifted from the last time I made one of these polling update videos. I've made one maybe three months ago, and I haven't really covered the shifts in national polls. Now I have made videos based off of uh, polls given from 538 and applied it to an electoral map. But that is not what this video uh, is about. Yes, we are going to talk about the polling data, but we are also going to get into the 2020 election forecast, Senate forecast, House forecast, and then talk a bit about the predicted uh, betting odds, the statewide betting odds, the approval ratings, pretty much everything that we see as a final recap culminating before the election. So we're starting off with this map. The reason why we're focusing on these key states is because we are worried about these uh, states in terms of how they're intended to vote. Joe Biden maintains a 9.2% lead nationwide, but there's no telling if that lead will trickle down into being a solid victory in swing states or a small victory. But Let's take a closer look at some of these battleground states. We're going to start off uh, from the West Coast and move over and just take a look at where the numbers actually stand today. So in the state of Arizona, Joe Biden leads by 2.6%. That state will go there. In the state of Nevada, let's go ahead and make sure that we're doing this really uh, briefly. I don't want to draw on too much time, but I'm just pointing out that, you know, as it stands today, Joe Biden does maintain a pretty strong lead uh, across the nation. Donald Trump maintains a very narrow lead in the state of Texas. In the state of Georgia, uh, uh, Donald Trump maintains, actually does not maintain, Joe Biden leads by a very narrow amount. Obviously, all of these things can very much change before Election Day, but I just want to point out that Joe Biden is doing very well. And the reason why I'm pointing that out is because we are nine days away, and I want to highlight where I could possibly see Donald Trump return in terms of his support, but all in all, it is not too likely. There is no way you come out of being underwater in all of the uh, practical battleground states by likely margins, as you see, or lean margins uh, to a point where you could possibly flipped the presidency in nine days. 2016 gave him more time than nine days. So uh, as we're just rushing across the electoral map, I just want to point that out just because I find it uh, fascinating that Joe Biden is maintaining such commanding leads in states he did not, uh, Hillary Clinton did not win back in 2016. The final state to characterize is the state of North Carolina, which Biden leads by 2.5%. Then we're going to go ahead and hit Maine's second district. So both of those are lean for the Democrats. And then um, Nebraska's second district is likely. So this is the map based off polls. I have not characterized the uh, safe states. Some of these solid Republican states are narrower than uh, what is suggested by this map. But pretty much based off of all of the 206 tossable electoral votes, Joe Biden wins all but a combined, what is that, uh, 58, 56? So as we're looking across the country, you see that Donald Trump and Joe Biden um, fare very differently. Where Donald Trump did well in in 2016, Joe Biden is doing as well. I mean, Wisconsin and Michigan and Pennsylvania actually better margins than what Donald Trump received in 2016. Joe Biden gets a narrower margin in Iowa, but a better one in neighboring Nebraska second uh, in North Carolina and Florida. Florida is a larger margin for Biden than what Trump won in 2016, but North Carolina is narrower. So you're looking at different parts of the country and you're seeing that Joe Biden is doing well. And that is the story of this election. We were always talking about how the election will inevitably narrow up. Well, it obviously wasn't inevitable if it didn't actually happen. The election has not narrowed up. As we see on the uh, national popular vote, Joe Biden maintains a 9.2% lead. While it was 10% yesterday or the day before, it doesn't really matter. As long as he's maintaining above a seven-point lead, he's outperforming where he was throughout practically the entire campaign season. The only other time where he hit 9% was August, and prior to that, it was mid-July. And even then, it was his peak. Today, it's the usual. So when we see Biden up by 9.2%, you have to think what brought Joe Biden to this point. Why is he doing so well that he's expected to win based off the polls? 357 electoral votes. Well, combined with lackluster debate performance for President Trump and his COVID-19 diagnosis and the Supreme Court bringing out unforeseen energy in the Democratic Party, uh, the Democrats have shown full force in terms of early voting. We are matching um, one candidate's uh, vote share in 2016. Over 60 million votes have been cast. The fact that Biden is now up by 9.2% when roughly half of the 2016 electorate has already voted is never a good sign, which is exactly why Joe Biden has an 87% chance of victory. Now here's your update on the forecast. We've covered the polls. Biden is up in all the swing states except for two. 
And in terms of the forecast, well, sort of same deal, just Trump does a tad bit better. Trump is the favorite to win Georgia. He is also the favorite to win Iowa and Maine's second district. Other than those three states or two states and one district, the rest of the swing states remain the same. North Carolina's blue, Arizona's blue, Florida's blue, Pennsylvania's blue, Wisconsin, Nevada, Michigan, Minnesota, New Hampshire, Maine, Colorado, Virginia, New Mexico. All swing states from 2016, not really swing states once we pass this point uh, in the state of Nevada. I mean, as we're taking a look at the forecast, Joe Biden is doing very well. And I don't think this is a surprise to many of you guys. If you've watched any of my videos, you will see that Joe Biden maintains his lead. And this really has not changed over time. You can literally see how the forecast has changed quite literally over time. A low point for Joe Biden when he, was when he had a two in three chance at winning the presidency. Today, Donald Trump is 20% less of a chance, has a 20% less chance at winning the election than he did four years ago. In the 2020 Senate elections, the Democrats have retained uh, their current lead over the Republicans in terms of who will win the Senate majority. As you can see, the Democrats have expanded it at a point in time. The Republicans had a 43% chance at retaining their majority. Today, it lands at 27. So the Democrats are expected to do very well. You can see that in these close races, the Democrats are now the favorites in Iowa, North Carolina, uh, Maine, Georgia Senate special election in Arizona, uh, in Colorado. So all of these states are flips, which obviously give the Democrats uh, a number of good victories that are able to push them over the top. So in these close races, in these competitive races, the Democrats officially reached 51 if the 538 forecast was or is correct. Uh, the Democrats average roughly 52 seats. And then the next forecast is a 2020 House forecast, which doesn't really need much of an update. Long story short, the Democratic Party is the clear favorite to retain uh, House control. They have a 96% chance to do so. An average of 238 seats. It falls between 223 and 254. Uh, the Democratic Party is going to do very well in the House of Representatives. They are expected to... Um, retain almost all of their seats there are some competitive ones such as oklahoma's fifth or you know for the republicans their counterpart will be virginia's fifth um all in all we have very competitive races on both sides uh and really when you add them all up the democrats are the favorites to win seats compared to where they were in 2018 which is also very substantial given that that was a year where the democrats won the popular vote by nine points and does anything really sound any more familiar so we're moving past the 2020 election forecast. Biden is at 87. The Senate forecast has the Democrats at 73. And the House forecast has the Democrats at 96. We've talked about the national polls. We've talked about statewide polls and the forecast. Well, what's next? There's this thing called a political betting market where people spend real money and they bet on who they believe will win the election. Now, the reason why we look at betting markets is because people tend to put aside their personal biases. People tend to say, you know, because... I am spending sometimes hundreds, maybe even thousands of dollars on which candidate I believe will win the state of Michigan, the state of Pennsylvania. They will put aside their personal beliefs and usually look at data, look at you know demographic trends, look at midterm data, uh, election polls, whatever they might need to, and then they draw their conclusion because this is real money. This is not you know speculative. This is not them publishing a prediction on an Instagram story. This is money and they will lose money if they end up being wrong. And the markets shift back and forth depending on how people are, you know, spending their money. And states such as Florida and states such as Georgia move to the right following Joe Biden's debate performance, uh, obviously Donald Trump's as well. Um, you know, different parts of the uh, regions move differently based off of national uh, speeches or debate or newfound polls, whatever it might be, the predicted market generally follows what the data is telling us. And if this is true, the Democrats would end up winning with over 300 electoral votes. They would flip the Rust Belt, flip Arizona, and flip North Carolina. And in terms of the presidential election winner, which is a different question in itself, Joe Biden is 63 cents for a share, which means if it's right, they can cash in on the remaining 37 cents for each share that they have. And for Donald Trump, it's 41 cents. Now, in 2016, it was way more lopsided in favor of Hillary Clinton. And that's not to say Joe Biden isn't doing better. He is absolutely doing better. People are just much more apprehensive and they aren't so quick to just bet on uh, Hillary Clinton or in this case, Joe Biden, just because the numbers are saying so. So if anything, these markets skew a little bit to the right. And even then, Joe Biden maintains a very, 
commanding uh, presence over Donald Trump. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but for the majority of the election season, Donald Trump was the favorite to win the election, according to Predict It. Now, it's not going to show you that now because we are um, looking at pretty much an electoral college map where Joe Biden is expected to flip Pennsylvania, flip Michigan, flip Wisconsin, flip Arizona, flip North Carolina. So realistically, you're not going to say that Donald Trump is going to win the election. However, there is also that other question where what if the polls are wrong? Well, that's where Donald Trump gets that 42 cents of a share. There is absolutely no way that Donald Trump could win the election if people are so confident about the Rust Belt specifically, about Arizona specifically, and not so much North Carolina. But the thing is, people were burned back in 2016, and they don't want to be burned again. So as you look at this map, the Democrats are at 305, the Republicans are at 233. And the final thing we're going to take a look at is the betting odds, not the betting odds, sorry, I misspoke, is the favorability ratings for both candidates. Joe Biden is in the positive, plus 5.2%. Donald Trump is in the negatives, minus 12.2% nationwide. Hillary Clinton, for reference, was hated much more. Hillary Clinton was at Donald Trump's negative numbers at negative 12.2%. Donald Trump was at negative 21%. While Trump's numbers have gone up, Biden is the only candidate in this race to be in the positive, and not one point in time was Hillary Clinton ever in the positive, and it was actually quite routine for Joe Biden throughout the campaign. So while there were points where he was down during the primary season, almost immediately following the convention, Joe Biden's approval rating jumped up and has remained in the positive. The same cannot be said for Donald Trump. So no matter what you look at, whether it's polling data, whether it's a national forecast, whether it's a Senate forecast or a House forecast, the same conclusion is drawn. The Democrats are doing very well. Whether you look at political betting markets, whether you take a look at approval ratings, whether you look at pretty much all of the other data given to us, it shows the Democrats are doing well. Whether it's turnout, whether it's party registration in terms of early vote, with the exception of maybe one or two states, the Democrats are doing well. So looking across this country, I cannot find a single period where I would say Donald Trump could possibly do very well because of this. Because we are nine days to go. There are a number of things that could have come out against Joe Biden that haven't. There are a number of things that the Trump campaign could have said but didn't, could have done differently. And we're nine days away, and roughly half of the 2016 electorate has already voted, which means that this election is literally almost over. There's less time for Trump to turn it around the same way he did four years ago. And with 60 million votes cast, when Biden has maintained a double-digit lead, if not a nine-point lead nationwide, I really cannot draw a conclusion where Donald Trump is doing even remotely well. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord link for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2020 election videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow.